Thank you very much. Appreciate it. Okay. Well, great to have the graduation last night, 16 students. And I just want to take a little bit of time to talk about the history, why we did it, and ultimately why we think you should do it. Um, but I will say this, I'll just reiterate what they said. Honestly, you know, we've been here nearly 29 years now, is it, next year? And of all the years and all the initiatives we've started and been involved in, this has been, I was going to say the single most, but I'll put it in the top three of the initiatives that we've ever started for helping to transform lives and help people in the discipleship path, that is, conforming to the likeness of Christ, this has been absolutely key. Um, so let me give a little bit of history. I'm going to start with this scripture. This is from 2 Timothy 2, verse 15. It says this, Do your best to present yourself to God as one approved, a worker who does not need to be ashamed and who correctly handles the word of truth. Now, hopefully, we've taught this. You know it. If you're online watching, you're in the room here today, Colchester, Bury St. Edmunds, I hope you know this. The gospel of Jesus Christ is not about earning your salvation. It's good to go, or let me say this correctly, it's good to be part of a local church, absolutely essential. It's fantastic to read your Bible. We love the Word of God. You should pray every day. You should be in fellowship. All those things are great, but none of them earn you favor with God. You've got favor with God because of His grace. And salvation is not something, if I try a bit harder, then I'll earn it. You can't earn salvation. It's a gift from God. Those things I just mentioned, they will all benefit you, but they don't save you. I love what Philip Yancey said. If you want a book that's good to read about grace, because grace is getting what you don't deserve, which is what salvation is. We're saved by grace. Philip Yancey says this, Grace means there is nothing we can do to make God love us more. And grace means there is nothing we can do to make God love us less. Grace means that God already loves us as much as an infinite God possibly can. If you've been around any time here at C3, you'll have heard me say that the gospel starts with what has been done. And I usually sing an old song from Sunday school, which goes like this. Done, done, D-O-N-E. Done, 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 perfectly. Finished, Christ cried as on Calvary. He died, so it's done, 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 done. It's, thank you very much. We're going to sing that next as we finish the service. It starts with what God has done. So it's not what we do. And yet, we just read it that we should do our best. We should be a worker to show ourselves approved. Listen to this one in Philippians 2, verse 12. It says this, Therefore, dear friends, as you've always obeyed, not only in my presence, but now much so much more in my absence, this is the Apostle Paul who traveled like um, we heard earlier, it says this, Continue to work out your salvation with fear and trembling. Continue to work out your salvation. Now, listen, he doesn't say work for your salvation. You work from your salvation. You work from that place of being saved, but that does not mean that there shouldn't be any effort involved. Listen to this. This is 2 Peter 1, verse 5 and 8. I think the verse will come up for you. For this very reason, make every effort to supplement your faith with virtue and with virtue knowledge and with knowledge self-control. Did you hear that? Make every effort. That's 2 Peter 1 verse 5 and 8. Dallas Willard, a philosopher theologian, put it like this, and I love this. He says, grace is not opposed to effort. It is opposed to earning. Earning is an attitude. Effort is an action. So let me say it to you again. You are saved by grace alone. That's Ephesians 2, verse 8 and 10. It's by grace you have been saved through faith. And this is not from yourselves. It is the gift of God. Know that not by works so that anyone can boast. 
For we are God's handiwork, created in Christ Jesus to do good works, which God prepared in advance for us to do. So our works do not save us, but once we are saved, there are works for us to do. This isn't a contradiction. This is that we work from grace, not for grace. So I'm saying all of that to set the context of academy, because academy takes a bit of work. It takes a bit of effort. It takes you working on your salvation. This is where we were at a number of years ago as a church, probably about 15 years ago. Theologically, in our basis of faith, in our belief system, we are what people call, if this means nothing to you, don't worry about it. I don't like labels so much, but this is what people call us. We are charismatic in our theology. And if you go to Wikipedia, so Wikipedia is always right. You know that, don't you? It says this. Charismatic Christianity, also known as spirit-filled Christianity, is a form of Christianity, this is what we are, that emphasizes the work of the Holy Spirit, spiritual gifts, and modern-day miracles as an everyday part of a believer's life. That'll do me. Bring it on. I'm happy though not always to be associated with some charismatics, to be associated with that definition. That's great. But we looked at charismatic Christianity about 15 years ago, and we thought we've got a problem. It's great for experiencing God. It's wonderful for saying miracles off a day. We believe them. It's great for speaking in tongues. If you don't speak in tongues, it's really helpful. It's great for prophecy and all of that. But we looked at it and we realized charismatic Christianity is very thin and lazy when it comes to handling the word of truth, making every effort to understand the scriptures, and often charismatic Christianity is, using some big words today, all right, synchronistic in the way that it grabs a little bit from this cult and a little bit from that cult and a little bit from other faiths even and puts them all together, but it has no theology with which to undergird it. And there is good Bible theology to undergird it all. But we were meeting people all the time. It was all about the experience, shabba-dabba-wabba. But it was nothing about under... <laughs> that wasn't my tongue, by the way, in case you were... Did he just speak in tongues? No, 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 that was just me making it up. It was all about goosebumps and, and feelings, and that's good. I want to feel God. But no one had any understanding. It was thin. We said, we've got to do something different. We've got to do it differently. So, we started what was known as, and some of you may have done this, I don't know, online or in other places in the room, we started what was called the Cambridge School of Theology. Did anybody do the Cambridge School of Theology? Look at that. Every, we did, this was before we ever had our building here. We got some of the best theological teachers across the UK and beyond. They were, honestly, still are. And we got them in to do our evening session, which was two hours long, and then we gave options to essays if people wanted it. And we, honestly, this is what I thought, because this is what happens in church life. I thought, we'll mine a seam. There'll be about 25 people who are interested, and then it'll get down to 10, and we'll, we'll end it. Well, ye of little faith. We had 80 people that signed up. Every Sunday night, they would turn up. Didn't have this building, didn't have our evening service, anything like that. 80 people. And I thought, well, I thought, that's great, but year two, we won't get 80. Oh, yes, we did. And when we finished it, which was the year we moved into here, we still had 70 plus people enrolled in our Cambridge School of Theology on a Sunday evening. And people's faith, you could see it was deepening so, so that they realized there is something to found our experiences on. Please, don't negate your experiences. We want them. We want you prophesying and speaking in tongues, and all, but we want you to understand the Scriptures and to work out your salvation with fear and trembling and understanding. To show yourself a worker, or where I come from, they say worker. To show yourself a worker approved that you are doing what God wants. So we closed with 70 plus people at our Cambridge School of Theology. We closed it at a height. Why did we close it? Because we wanted to go two directions, and this is where it comes to the academy. At that point, we partnered with Westminster Theological Center, WTC, because we searched around other organizations that were doing robust, charismatic, 
theological study and it was accredited and we loved what they were doing. So Rosemary, who was up here today, is uh, completing her MA with them. So are some others in the church and others have done the certificate or the grad dip. And they do different accredited courses through Chester University. So we partner with, we have a hub here. We like the fact that if you want to study, study theology to degree level, starting with certificate right through, so you can do that without having to leave the first city of Cambridge. Because why would you want to leave the first city of Cambridge? You, all right, then, maybe some of you do. Welcome back, Alex. We, we, we just want people to stay here forever. Why wouldn't they? And build a church. So this is what they say their vision is, WTC. Theological education, integrating the best of scholarship with the power and gifts of the Holy Spirit to transform, heal, and release God's people into his purpose. Sounds good. So think about it. But that, so that was one thing we partnered with. Then we started our C3 Academy. It was originally known as the Journey Academy. And this had an emphasis of theology, yes, but also of leaders. Because honestly, we believe this. Everything does rise and fall on leaders. We need leaders in our... Hey, we've got a, a, something going on in the world right now for a new leader in our nation because... How, how do I say this? Maybe I shouldn't say it because it sounds too political. Because the last guy, if that's what a leader is like, forget it. And I'm not talking politics. I'm talking about integrity. I'm talking about honesty as well as skills. So we have a leadership dearth, and we honestly believe that leaders, le leadership isn't the most important gift. It's just that when the tide of leadership rises, every other gift rises as well. So all the boats rise when the tide comes in. Same with leadership. All the other gifts will be released if a leader is functioning, doing well in what they should be doing. And we're not just talking church leadership. We want to produce leaders in every strata of life. Every area. Angie and I are Mers, uh, the Mers chaplain this year, partly because the Mers in the church here, in case you don't know. But we've been able to go in and speak to the city council. And we, we were there this week talking to them about servanthood. We need servant leaders in our nation, in every area, in councils, in government, in uh, science, in education, in the church. And we said, we want to start an academy to develop leaders. Leaders. As soon as I mention leaders, some of you have switched off. Some of you online, because you've gone like this. Oh, click. I'm not a leader, so the academy isn't for me. Wrong! If you're a human being made in the image and likeness of God, you have a mandate from heaven. You have a purpose for living. It goes right back to Genesis chapter 1, verse 28. This is your mandate. Rule and subdue. God created us in his image and in his likeness. Nothing else was created like God. And then he told us, go and rule as his vice regents, as those that are ruling on his behalf. See, I think, this is just a thought of mine, I wouldn't die for this. I think God said at the end of creation, it's very good, because that's what he says in Genesis 1. He didn't say it's perfect, because there's still stuff to be done, and we are those that are meant to carry it on. So we made nothing else, no one else other than human beings are made in the image and likeness of God. And we are to go into all the world and to rule and subdue. Use modern day words, cultivate and innovate. That's what we're meant to do. You're meant to be in your world, whatever your world is. It could be in the military, it could be in software, it could be in education, it could be in the home. It could be in gardening. That's part of ruling and subduing. Innovate and cultivate. Innovate and cultivate. The word that we gave to the academy students last night was this word as they go into this next season. Flourish. Go on. Flourish. Wherever you go. So don't rule yourself. Don't point it rude, my dad used to say. Don't rule yourself out. And say, well, I'm not a leader. Yes, it, I mean, that's true of every human being that can have influence. How much more of a human being that's given their life to Christ? See, too many Christians have stepped out of leadership and influence roles and left it to others, and then we complain that there's a hole and there's a vacuum and others are leading without a knowledge of God and understanding of his ways. Step into it. Step into it. When God created us, he gave us an earthly vocation. 
There's a lot of theology around this. I, I can't go into it about, uh, if you look it up, it's called Imagio Dei. That is made in the image and likeness of God. That's what we're meant to be and to lead our world wherever we go. Image bearers into all the world. I finish with this. Um, John Calvin, in one of his institutes of the Christian religion, wrote this. The knowledge of God and that of ourselves are connected. Without knowledge of self, there's no knowledge of God. Without knowledge of God, there is no knowledge of self. And one of the things we want to do on academies, we want you to help you understand yourself better. We do a lot of this through Life Thrive, which my wife is an expert on. If one of the, someone asked me the other day, what have you learned most from your wife in your leadership journey? You know what my answer was in that? That the more I understand myself, the better leader I can be. She's been on at me to understand, why do you react like that? What is it? And what, one thing we do when we do academies, help you understand yourself better. In fact, you've heard it in the testimonies this morning. And then we want to help you understand God better. It's broken down in three terms like this. Number one is a theology. Don't be frightened by that word. Theology is just a study of God. Who wouldn't want to study God? And the best way to study God is to get to understand what he's spoken. God has spoken. It's in the word. So we explore. We want you to understand the great big arch of God's grand redemptive plan from, Gen from Genesis to Revelation. We can't do a deep dive into every book, but we do on some. And we try to help you understand and to locate yourself in it because the story ain't finished yet. And you're being written into the story. Someone made in the image and likeness of God. That's the first term. And the second term, it's more about understanding yourself more. One thing I, I've learned in my 30 plus years of leadership is the hardest person to lead is me. If I can't lead me, I can't lead you. So it's a lot about self-leadership and understanding ourselves. And then the third term, we get pretty practical on how you can grow in your skills and upskill yourself as a human being. You see, this is the way to flourish. I was reading Psalm 148 this week, and it talks about the mountains and the stars worshipping God. And then it goes on to talk about kings and queens and human beings worshipping God. And I thought about, well, how, how does a star worship God? Because I don't think stars sing, because we tend to think, as soon as someone says to you worship, you start to think about songs you sing. That's, that's an iggly little tiny little bit of worship. Worship is not always an emotional response that involves a song. The stars worship God by being a star. And the mountains worship God by being an awesome mountain. Look at that mountain. That mountain's not singing as far as I know, unless there's some voice I can't hear. You, They're just worshiping God by being an awesome mountain. And the animals... They're not made like us. They're different. They worship God by being an animal, by running as fast as a cheetah, is it? I just thought of a, a book we used to read about my dad's brilliant. You know, my dad can run as fast as a cheetah, and he's as strong as a gorilla. Well, all those other animals, they worship God by just being themselves. How can human beings worship God? Oh, by gathering in church and singing. No, that's part of it. It's by being fully human, fully representing and growing in this understanding that I want to be in the image and likeness of God. And the best person who has demonstrated that in the face of God's earth, his name is Jesus. And the more like him we become, so our worship is more about beholding him because of who he is, and then we become like him as a consequence. It's about being the full human, about being the best electrician I can be, about being the best mom and dad I can be. It's about being the best, so I could go on. When you write software, you're creating something that shows you are made in the image and likeness of God. It's by flourishing as a human being, and God is praised, and you are fulfilled by that. And that's what we want to do through Academy. 
We want to help you be the best version of yourself you can ever be. And we think we can help you. And we think we've seen it already. So why don't you consider it? At the end of this service, you'll be able to go into our Next Steps Lounge. And you'll be able to talk to Rosemary. And we've got brochures there. There are different options we've already talked about. You can do the one-year course, or there's a three-year full-time option now that we're introducing. You could discuss that. We may not take you on this year because we're trialing it a little. So first down here is, is going to happen it with, with Anya. And so we're, we're looking at a full-time option as well for those of you that feel maybe called particularly into church leadership and church ministry, which is a high calling, but it's not for everyone. But we want leaders in every sphere, and we help equip so you can do it part-time Ian said it so briefly as well we can do it anywhere, Colchester Bury St Edmunds here in Cambridge online because we're doing it online as well as some in-person days throughout the year so pray, I'm going to pray and after I've prayed I'm going to hand over to the location pastors who are with us in our different locations today let's bow our heads and pray Lord Jesus, thank you for this wonderful call that we have on our lives, every one of us. To make our world better, to rule and subdue, to innovate and create and cultivate. Help us, we pray, to do it to the fullest extent that we can. As those made in your image and likeness. Thank you for those who are graduating today as they go into this next season. Bless them, we pray. And keep them in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. I'm going to say goodbye to you guys in Colchester and Barry and online who are with us now. God bless you. If you enjoyed this video today, why don't you click subscribe and click on that notification bell to get a notification the next time we upload a video. And if you're new or you've been coming to the C3 Church for a little while now, why don't you find out what your next step might be in the journey of faith? Click on the next step link in the description below to find out what your next step in your journey might be.